Well, hey there, everyone. So today we have a rather greasy and grimy job to do. Um, so what this thing here is a large gearbox that was over at McDonald and used in something they called a um, billet dumper. Uh, basically, if the billets came out of the furnace, if they were unneeded, and you had to just discharge them back out of the furnace instead of going to the mill, you'd, you'd bring them out on a roller table. And then this here gearbox uh, would actuate a pusher that would push the billets onto a uh, on, on, on the, a set of tables so that they can cool down and then go back into the pile. So we tore it apart this morning bring it over here this casting here weighs about uh, 6,000 pounds and why why is it here well the idea is to use this as the electric drive gearbox for the Todd engine in the rolling mill I had been playing at over the years I'd been planning different things different gearboxes different ideas for driving it uh, but I, I you know I've, I've seen this gearbox over there a hundred times and it never really uh, occurred to me to use it and then I started doing I started doing a little bit of figuring and figured out gear reductions all that and I think we can get to 30 to 40 rpm that we want to have through the gears uh, and the uh, you know DC mill motor a 104 and a half mill motor there on the end and with this thing weighing you know six tons for the whole gearbox it's plenty robust to handle whatever horsepower we need to uh, to spin the Todd engine in the rolling mill. So we tore it apart this morning. Uh, two truckloads from McDonald over to here. I still have the gears and the top on the trailer. Um, yeah, it's it's rather mucky in there. Uh, so I'm not going to clean that out. What I'm going to do is clean the, the the mating surfaces here, clean the bearings any dirt that might have gotten on the gears and we're just going to put this thing back together tomorrow and bolt it up because uh, I think it'll it'll be just fine for for right now and maybe later when it actually goes to get installed might tear back apart and give it a good cleaning then but I don't want to leave it open so that you know dirt and all that can blow into this thing and next thing you know it's just a grimy mess and I also want to get it together uh, so that I can I can put the motor back on and hook the motor up to the leads from the locomotive and then get it to function and then get it dialed in see what I have to do to get get it to give us the uh, the output that that we want to have so just like everything else from McDonald this was made at the plant uh, the casting well the castings were not but all the machine work was done there all the design work was done there at McDonald um, there, there were th several of these, uh, what they called the shuffle bars on the cooling beds. Each set of shuffle bars was run by one of these gearboxes. Uh, the furnace pusher in a 16 mil was run by one of these, and then of course the, the billet dumper. There's t the t the two drives for the shuffle bars are still over there, and we may salvage some parts off of uh, those, especially the uh, the brake. Um, <clears throat> to have for spares for this and maybe even an extra set of gears um so um yeah it's 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 quite grimy in there and uh i've been fighting not becoming just a uh complete grimy mess all day all right let's go take a look at the uh, the other parts all right so here are the two spur gears and the top cover so uh the output came out of these uh, shafts, so you had two arms that would that would make a reciprocating motion. So what we can do with this is take one of these off and then make an adapter to goes to the universal joint that then goes to the uh, crankshaft, and um, we might just leave the other side the way it is, in no sense to mess with it. Then you have the uh, the big spur gear here which messes uh, meshes with that pinion there and then that gear will mesh with the uh, with the motor and the motor that was on this is this one right here 
So this is what they call an MD-104. <clears throat> I think this is a 30 horsepower motor. Uh, I have the 104 and a half size, which is 10 horsepower um, faster, or not, 10 horsepower stronger than the 104. And we're going to retrofit that one onto this gearbox. They're pretty close. Um, then this bell-shaped object, that is the, uh, um, the motor brake. And then back here, of course, the pinion and the spur gear for what they call the, uh, the back shaft. And then that gear will mesh in. Now, on the 104 and a half I have, has a gear looks just like this. That's 23 teeth. The other one I have is 25 teeth. Um, but the pitch diameter and everything, or pitch and all that's the same. So it'll, it'll retrofit right on there. Might have to do a little machine work to get it to fit because bolt holes are different places and all that. But I'm pretty sure I can get it to work. <clears throat> so on this now the way this worked is that when uh, the machine stopped moving uh, and you cut the power to the motor the brake would apply automatically and then bring it to a stop we don't really want to do that because you can you know shut the power off to the motor but you're still gonna have a steam side running the engine or you just want the thing to to uh, spin down on its own because of all the flywheel effect um, however, if uh, we get into a situation where there's an emergency, like like a, something comes apart and it's flailing around in there, um, or you know any any type of emergency situation, you want to be able to stop quick. So we're going to have the brake on uh, this, but it will only actuate if the safety circuit in the building with the engine and the mill. Uh, would trip. If the safety circuit trips, the emergency uh, steam shutoff valve, hey look we got a little groundhog over there, uh, the, the, the steam shutoff valve uh, will trip, the motor will lose power to it, and then the brake will apply and uh, to try to bring everything to a halt as fast as possible um, without tearing stuff up. So it's another reason why I wanted a heavy, heavy gearbox because I wanted that ability to have some sort of emergency braking. Now the other thing that we can do is is set up the motor with a dynamic brake so that as it winds down, it's creating uh, current working as a you know DC motor acts as will also work as a generator. It'll make power to go to a set of resistor banks. The resistor banks create the resistance, which slows the motor down, just like dynamic brakes in a diesel locomotive. We can do that with uh, DC motors. So uh, we want to have that little bit of a safety device on there. All right, so um, I'm going to continue working on that uh, base and then bring the gears down and uh, get them cleaned up and ready to go in and then bring the, uh, the cover down and stick it on, um, get it bolted back together, and then <clears throat> probably probably stick it on one of the carpenter cars and put it on the storage track so whenever we want to do some work on it and put the motor on and, and get that all ready to go all I got to do is is dig it out of the siding and bring it over to work on it Boy, I love having a two-foot gauge railroad here <laughs> it just makes this so nice just go and do a little switching and pull out the car you want and work on it and then put it back away when you're done <laughs> All right, uh, so that's pretty much what we got going on right now. Um, still working on the uh, concrete forms in the building for the uh, for the foundation. I wanted to get this thing out of the mill because the furnace building next to it, uh, they're planning on demolishing next week, and this was pretty close to it. So I wanted to uh, get it out of there while I could. And this is really the first good Saturday. Yeah, really, this is the first good Saturday we've had in quite a while. So uh, one last thing here before we go, I just wanted to show you what the, what those DC motor brakes look like. <clears throat> All right, uh, so this is one right here. So you'll have that, uh, that drum right there in here and you have two brake shoes, one on either side. And then there's a spring in here that keeps this applied 
Um, so when there's no power to it, that spring's pushing this in and then pulling on this, which is pulling this brake shoe, so it's squeezing it. And when you put power to a DC motor to operate it, especially the, uh, you know, like a hoist on a crane, that power to the motor will go through this coil first, uh, creating a, you know, uh, uh, creating the magnetism which sucks this in overcomes the spring resistance which releases the brake um, these these particular ones were made by uh, cutler hammer it's a very common in the steel industry we found we found another one here a, a spare coil uh, we have some spare brake shoes and all that so we have plenty of parts um, but yeah I'd like to set this up so that it's it's part of the emergency stop system for the uh, <clears throat> for the mill if it works out I haven't really done a lot of thinking on the electrical side of things but I think it's gonna work so all right everyone so uh, reminder starting in June uh, two weekends in June or two Sundays in June we're doing steam locomotive experiences the first one June 1st we already have two people so I think we have two more spots available for June 1st uh, and then check the website youngstownsteel.org look for operating days and go in there and if you want to come out and run 58 uh, sign on up all right everyone take care